Hi everybody, Doug here. Welcome back to yet another board game channel where we'll be starting yet another board game playthrough. And yes, going back to the app-driven Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition as I just picked up the Streets of Arkham expansion. So we're going to have a look at that and give it a go. It's added a few new things like elixirs and uh, ways to improve our skills. Yay! And a new puzzle in the app. So, um, well, before we get into the actual scenario and everything in the app, we are going to decide... Well, I have already randomly chosen three investigators to be involved in our mission. Uh, yeah, I already chose them because you don't want to see me digging like crazy for the tokens. I wanted them already out. So we're gonna go uh, we're gonna do three investigators, as I usually do. Uh, we're going to be starting with Minthifan, the secretary. You can see is nicely balanced for uh, health and sanity at seven each. You can see her stats there. She's uh, again pretty well balanced. She's got either threes or fours on everything. Once per round, you or another investigator within range may re-roll one die while resolving a test. And we'll look at her backstory. Story so far. Min Thiefan landed a good job directly out of school, perhaps due to her unique upbringing and her fluency in English, French, Vietnamese, Korean, and Japanese. She worked for Mr. Thomas as his secretary for a number of years and considered him to be not just her employer, but her friend. But after coming across a strange book in the course of his work, Importing and exporting antiquities, Mr. Thomas became awed, moody, and ultimately took his own life. Suddenly, Min was on her own for the first time in her life. Uncertain what to do, Min, Min set about putting Mr. Thomas's affairs in order and soon discovered that his import and export business had exposed him to a dark and hidden world of the unknowable and unthinkable. Now Min has a new task, one chosen for herself for the first time. Discover what awful truth made Mr. Thomas commit suicide. And yes, there is her, her miniature. Next up, and go ahead and show his miniature, we have our bootlegger, Finn Edwards, holding his little bottle of booze there. There he is. He is uh, a little bit better in health at eight versus sanity of sixth. Oh, he's got, oh yeah, everybody's got threes and fours on almost everything. So again, skills nicely balanced. Finn's special ability, once per round, you may move one space before or after performing a search action. All right. Now, his tail. When it comes to moving merchandise, Finn Edwards trusts his own wits more than any gun to get the job done. His aim is to never be caught unprepared when things inevitably go south. Uh, and so far, that plan is working out for him. Finn's bootlegging operation has moved goods all over the East Coast, but Lately, his deliveries are being interrupted by unexplainable phenomena. Stay, staying one step ahead of his opposition has suddenly become more difficult. However, Finn Edwards likes the taste of danger as long as he can keep one eye on the exit. Okay, and joining Finn and Min, yes, Harvey Walters, fan favorite. Harvey Walters, the professor, because he's just awesome. Uh, he is super sane, with nine sanity, five health. Uh, as an action, 
he can do this. Another investigator, another investigator, not himself, within range gains one clue. Activate this ability only once per round. Let's see, he's all threes and fours except for agility at two, because Harvey is is getting on. Professor Walters began as a devotee of the archaic and obscure, but over the years, he discovered that his knowledge of ancient languages, profane relics, and strange rituals is vital to addressing dangers in the modern day. He is both an avid collector of prehistoric ephemera and a fount of knowledge regarding bizarre primordial religions that worshipped nightmarish gods eons ago. When a supernatural event occurs, Professor Walters is often asked to bring his considerable resources and experience to bear on the problem. And there he is with his cane. Don't mess with Harvey. Uh, so Finn is actually, although chosen randomly, we did get one of the new characters from the expansion. Okay, we're going to go to the app, choose our scenario. Uh, it'll tell us our items, and then we will uh, get started. Okay, I've decided to do specifically one of the scenarios that was uh, unlocked by having this expansion. I'm going to be trying Gangs of Arkham. Uh, the other two look extremely hard. I mean, not that they're ever easy. But yeah, we're going to give Gangs of Arkham a go. After a violent murder, tensions are rising between the Sheldon and O'Banion gangs. Yeah, we're going to deal with thugs. The mutilation caused by the murderer is nothing short of unnatural, and you are compelled to investigate. Can you discover the facts behind the murder before all-out war is declared between the gangs? So we're going to get it from both sides, I'm sure. So we're going to choose our investigators... There is Finn. There is Harvey and Min. So we'll see what starting items we get. Uh, just let me dig those out. All right, as well as one clue for each investigator. We're going to have, well, we've got the 38 revolver. It's a firearm, a trusty service piece for any member of the armed forces. I'm uh, going to give that to Finn. Um, yeah, ranged weapon, potential, well, a base, of, a base damage of three, hopefully. I know it said on his thing he, uh, he, he trusts in his wits more than, uh, more than his gun, but that doesn't mean he's not going to carry a gun. He's a bootlegger. He, uh, he needs a little protection. Uh, the fine clothes. There we go. Equipment. It's two-sided, so if you're a girl or a boy, it doesn't matter. Uh, roll one additional die while resolving a, an influence test. Everybody's got an influence of four. Uh, so I'm giving it to Harvey. He's the one who's most likely to have a, a spiffy suit out of everyone. Uh, the magnifying glass. Roll one additional die while resolving an observation test. Again, everybody has an observation of four, so it doesn't much matter who I give it to. They're all equal. Uh, so we're going to give that to Min. Min is also going to carry the scalpel. Uh, that, that's new with the expansion. It's a bladed weapon, does a base of one, and yeah weapon. You may deal one additional damage while attacking with this card. Uh, and finally, we have a spell. Uh, this is another new thing. This expansion, this is a new spell. Implant Suggestion. As an action, another investigator within range may perform one action. You can give your action basically to somebody else, uh, then flip this card. Giving that to Harvey as he has the highest lore. So yeah, that's that is that. So uh, I'm just going to turn this up a tiny bit, and we will get 
our introduction. Time for the prologue. <coughs> yeah, oh, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the, the word letters in the quote. Went a little bit funny there for a second. The body, if it still could be called that, lays on a sterile steel table. A man in a white coat grips the sheet covering the corpse in his rubber gloves. Brace yourself, warns Eugene Winchester, the town coroner. As he lifts the sheet, you feel the bile rise in your throat. This one came in early this morning, Dr. Winchester says. Police say it was a mob hit, but I cannot believe even gangsters would be so savage. I've seen five bodies in two weeks that are the result of the feud between the Obanian and the Sheldon gangs, but nothing like this. Whoever, whatever did this, must be more beast than man. It must be stopped. As you head toward Easton and the scene of the murder, you feel unease churning in your bowels. You have a feeling it will remain until your work is done. All right, so we will continue. And I will probably need to break to find our beginning tile. All right, there we are. The murder took place in a room in the Carmichael Ho Hotel. The four-story hotel is located in the heart of the East Town District. It is early evening when your taxicab drops you at the front entrance of the hotel where a revolving door leads into the hotel lobby. Place the lobby tile and walls as indicated. So we're going to block off that door and that door. Oh, that should go the other way around. That door. You enter the lobby through the revolving door. The lobby was once nicely decorated, but a lack of maintenance and care shows in the grimy floor and dirty wallpaper. Place your investigator figures there. Uh, gotta find tokens here. The main door to the lobby leads back to the street. So we can go back outside if we want. The door to your right has a sign that says exit above it. Up the stairs is a door leading to some of the hotel's rooms. Place an explore token. Oop, I need to find a person. A man in a rumpled tuxedo with must hair and an unkempt mustache stands at a desk in front of you. Place a person token. Uh, this is the hotel manager. A box sits on a table with a sign reading, Lost and Found. And a luggage trolley. There we are. Uh, could be used to block a door should the need arise. We're going to place a barricade right there. You set out to gather clues, interview witnesses, and find suspects in the murder case. And we go into the investigator phase. Uh, I'm just going to think for a minute, see what I want everybody to do. All right, first thing, uh, we're going to have Harvey go first. He is going to approach the hotel manager. Doesn't take an action because it's all, whoops, in the same space. So we're going to uh, just talk to the manager. I'll just read it to you. Good day. The hotel manager greets you with a smile that you can tell is forced. How may I be of assistance? So we can ignore him, or we have two action um, alternatives. We can either say we are here to investigate last night's murder, or we saw the police around here this morning. What happened? Um, 
let's start with we saw the police around here this morning. He seems a little jumpy. We don't want to just, boom, hey, we're here to figure out why people are dying. That could put him off. Uh, so we're going to choose. We saw the police around here this morning. What happened? Oh, yes, a terrible tragedy. The hotel manager answers. One of our guests passed last night, but rest assured, everything is in order and we are still open for business. Well, we didn't get much out of there, so can we speak to him again? Ah, okay, so, um, yeah, Harvey will take a, a second action, speak to him again. Uh, says, what can I do for you? And we can either ask, what can you tell me about the death? Or what can you tell me about the deceased? Let's, uh, start with the death itself. What can you tell me about the death? We found the gentleman deceased in his room this morning. I'm afraid that's all I'm at liberty to say. Well, we didn't get much out of him, did we? Okay, that's it for Harvey. Just hoping he'd get to use his fine clothes and maybe do a little bit of influencing. Uh, okay, so now we're going to have Finn go. Um, he's going to use... His special ability, once per round, you may move one space before or after performing a search action. Uh, he might as well, he's going to check out the lost and found. So, he gets a free move to go in here and uh, search the lost and found. Yes, a box sits on the table with a sign reading lost and found. We can just choose search as an action. The box is filled with items left behind by previous guests. Inside it, you find a useful trinket. Gain the Gambler's Dice Common Item, then discard this token. Okay, Finn found a goodie. Gambler's Dice. I think this is, yeah, this is new. The expansion, he now has this as a bit of equipment. Once per round, you may convert a clue result on your die to a blank in order to re-roll all the other dice. So yeah, it's a bit of a gamble. Now well, that is that, so we're going to take that token away. He's got another action. Um, really, he can only move to have a look around somewhere else. Uh, to do so, I want him to go. Yeah, let's... Have him head over into this space. Now, Min, let's see if she can get anything more out of the uh, hotel manager. I'm going to see if she can talk to him. Yeah, she can talk to him as an action. Uh, she's going to ask, what can you tell me about the deceased? I do not know much about the deceased personally, but... Allow me to check our records, the hotel manager replies, opening a large dossier at the check-in desk. Here we are, room 202. The guest's name was... Hmm. All it says here is John Doe. Well, that's useful. Mr. Doe checked in yesterday for a two-night stay. He paid in cash. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you, as I never met the man personally. Gain a clue. Well, at least Min got a clue out of it. So she now has two. I think, well, it's in the space. Let's go ahead and um, let's have a look at the exit token. I think it is. Yes, the door has a sign that says exit above it. We'll see what's out back. We're going to explore as her second action. The door opens into a dark alleyway. Discard this token and place the alley to tile as indicated. All right, we have an alley. Uh, the alley opens into a street corner. We put a sight token there. Ooh. A nondescript door leads into the building ac uh, across the alley from the hotel. 
You can see on the door the outline of a small slot at eye level, allowing someone inside to look out. A man in dirty clothes and suspenders is loudly banging on the door. I told you we ain't open yet, a voice hollers from inside. The man outside gives up his banging, pulls out a cigarette, and lights it up. He spots you through a puff of smoke. Look ye what we have here, the man says, the cigarette bouncing on his lips. He saunters in your direction. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, good. We already have an enemy. <laughs> well, you're fu well, you look like you're looking for a good time. I bet a finely dressed individual like yourself can afford a good time. Or at least can afford to not have a very bad time. He reaches in a pocket, pulls out a pistol, and brandishes at you menacingly. Hand over your valuables. Spawn a hired gun, as indicated. Let me find one of these guys. Alright, there we are. Hired gun. So he's got an evade, um, whatever the stat is, the evade of two, a horror of one. Uh, when financial gain is the most important factor in normal decisions, ordinary men become the worst sort of monster. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, yeah, it's going to spawn there. That's wonderful. You may move one space into the explored area. You know what? I am not going to step out into the alley with the man with the gun. I'm just going to stay in here and uh, force him to come to me. Okay, uh, that was Min's second action. Which means, unfortunately, we are going to have to go into the mythos phase now. And this guy's going to come after us. I suspect there's pretty good odds we're going to have to roll some dice here. So, into our first mythos phase. Yes. And the investigator phase. What do we get? Light and shadow create distracting patterns on the walls. This mythos event affects the investigator with the lowest observation. While well, everybody is tied for observation of four. Going to have it affect Min because she has the magnifying glass and she gets to roll an extra die. Assuming this isn't some kind of trick and they're going to make us roll something else. Okay, Min. Ah. Yes, you tried to discern what made that worrisome shadow. I'm going to test her observation and she needs one success on this. So that means she's going to roll all five dice and she just needs one success and she got two. If you pass, you identify it as a harmless mundane object outside the window. So not the guy with the gun. The hired gun moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Well, he's only got to move one space. Because now he is in within range of both men. And, well, he's within range of everybody, really. Uh, then it attacks the investigator within range who has the most items. Well, that is going to be either Min or Min or Finn. I didn't even realize that their names rhymed. Uh, well, Min actually has two clues, so she has a better chance of uh, doctoring her role. So, yep, it's gonna go after Min. Oh yes, and it looks like this guy has five hit points for when we eventually start attacking. Okay. The monster attacks. One of your possessions catches the light. So I'd be either my scalpel or my magnifying glass. Yeah, big big bounty for him here. And the greedy hired gun's attention is drawn to you. Are gonna roll her agility, and we need a single success. She does have an agility of four. Oh. Okay, she's getting any successes, but she is going to spend one clue. 
to transform that clue into a success. If you pass, you quickly step back into the shadows and the lout soon loses interest. <laughs> if you fail, da-da-da-da, continue. Right, each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. Everybody's going to have to do this. So we're going to choose uh, the hard gun and resolve a horror check. <clears throat> you start to return the brute's banter almost despite yourself. Everybody's going to have to do a, an influence check and needs two successes. All right, well, I'll go left to right on my investigators, so we're going to start with Min. She needs two. And no, she's only got one clue, so she can't change it to succeed. So, uh, if you fail, you are drawn too deeply into com uh, camaraderie with someone trying to kill you. Suffer one horror and become dazed. So, we're going to draw our first horror. Oh, and it's not face down. It just says horror. Uh, what does she get? Shrieking fit. You scream and scream and scream and then you cry and cry and then giggle and then hiccup. Resolve immediately. Become restrained, then discard this card. Well, at least we don't have to keep that. So she's going to be dazed and restrained. So let's remind ourselves what these do. Dazed. You cannot spend clues to convert dice or perform additional puzzle steps. So her clue right now is useless. So she is dazed. But also, do, 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 restrained. There we go. You cannot move voluntarily, so somebody else could shove her. Uh, at the end of your turn, discard this card. So, Min's freaking out just a little bit. Finn, because uh, yeah, he's only one space away. That is within range, so he is going to roll his four. Okay, he got two successes, no problem. Harvey, with his fine clothes, gets to roll an extra die, so that means he's going to roll five. And yes, Harvey, unsurprisingly, killed it. Got two successes and two clue tokens, so he could have changed. Anyway, so... If, they, if you pass, which our guys did, they say a joyful heart is good medicine, and this enemy has a playful, if callous, wit. <laughs> uh, flip one damage face down. Not an issue. Alright, so we are going to end the Mythos phase, and I think we're going to end the episode there. We did a lot of setup, so... Really only time for one uh, one round. So let's see, let us go to, so save and quit. And we will go back to the hotel next time where, uh, well, everybody's going to have to beat up on this thug because, wow, that escalated really quickly. <laughs> Boom! Monster. Enemy. Right away. Okay, well, we'll see if we can take him down next time. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and liking the videos, both on YouTube and Board Game Geek. I appreciate it. And we will see you next time for yet another go at Mansions of Madness. So long.